looking at some cardiac muscle. And so what you're seeing here is a low magnification image of a cardiac muscle slide. Um, in this region here, we're likely to be seeing some longitudinal sections through cardiac muscle tissue, uh, whereas in, I guess, like this over here, we're probably going to be seeing some cross sections through this muscle. So we'll take a look at those in a little bit more detail in a moment. Okay. Uh, there's one more area I want to show you, which is in this area here. This is the endocardium. Okay. And this is where we're going to be looking for Purkinje fibers. And so right here is a cluster of Purkinje fibers. Uh, this may not seem like a lot right now. You may not be able to see much detail, but uh, we'll zoom in on this. We'll take a closer look so you'll be able to see Purkinje fibers in this one. Okay? So let's go to higher magnification. So let's go, this is 40x. Let's move on to 100x and get a bit more detail. So here we are, we've got some cardiac muscle. This is probably mostly longitudinal section here. We'll zoom in on that in a minute. But I'd like to point out something, or I guess explain something before we go on. You may have noticed some of these basophilic spots in a few places on this slide. A little magnification. Now you might say this doesn't seem to belong. And it's true, it doesn't. Um, it should not be here, but it is. So I actually had to look this one up. Uh, these basophilic structures are actually evidence of a parasitic infection. Um, this slide is taken from beef heart. And so one of the things that um, tends to be a very common infection is a parasitic infection by an organism called Sarcocystis cruzi which tends to affect cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle. So uh, in some organisms, you might see these things, and these are very basophilic. There's lots of nuclei there. That's just basically a parasite. So it's not common to see this in cardiac muscle. You are supposed to be seeing mostly some of this kind of eosinophilic material. You should not be seeing any of this sort of stuff in healthy tissue. So again, if this looked a little odd when you were looking at this at low magnification, that's why, okay? So it's not quite normal. There is, in fact, an infection here, and it is a parasitic infection, okay? So let's just ignore these for the time being and focus on the normal parts of this. And let's take a look at some longitudinal sections through cardiac muscle just to get an idea of what that looks like under the microscope, okay? So here we are at 400x, and so what we're looking at here is some longitudinal sections through cardiac muscle. Let me just try to increase the contrast a little bit. There we go. So some of the things to notice here. If you look carefully, you might notice that there's some branching going on. So for example, here, just above the pointer, there's a very obvious spot just above the nucleus here where this cell seems to split off into two directions. There's a few places like this throughout this slide, so I'm just going to scan around a little bit, let you guys take a look for yourselves. Okay. Or you can see some branching going on and branches of a cell merging together or coming apart, so can see some of this stuff happening. So it's a very common thing. Um, again, as you know, cardiac muscle um, tends to work as a unit. And so these, each one of these cells is connected to its neighbors by junctional complexes. Okay, uh, Those junctional complexes are found in areas called, or regions called intercalated discs. Now, if I can manage to find a really well-stained area that has good contrast, I will try to show you some of those. Okay, so we're going to try to look for some of those in um, a higher magnification. Uh, the other thing to notice is that some of these regions are a little granular looking, so especially in between the cells. 
a bit of a granular appearance to things like here for example um, for something a little bit more obvious in this region here what you're looking at is a very highly vascularized tissue so cardiac muscle is highly vascularized so you're going to be seeing a lot of capillaries passing in between the muscle cells so in this region here lots of red blood cells that's uh, either a larger blood vessel or just basically damaged the slide that has kind of allowed some of the blood to spill um, again here's that's basophilic materials likely to be some of that parasitic infection here as well okay um, again in here especially you can see right there some of this granular appearance kind of a long sort of line of red blood cells in between the cells and you can see those throughout this slide okay so let's kind of zoom in on some of these just to get a better view of some of these cells now so let's go up to 1000 X and we're gonna have to decrease the contrast a little bit here maybe increase the light intensity a bit as well just a bit. Here we go. Wow. Okay, so right here you can see a nice capillary right there in between a couple of muscle fibers. So here's one nucleus of whoops. Here we go. One nucleus on one fiber. So right there, central nucleus. Here's the edge. The other edge is right next to that red blood uh, those red blood cells. Okay, so you can see a central nucleus see if we can find any branch points in some of these cells again it's a little bit difficult to see some things at very high magnification just because of how um, we have the issue with depth of field um, again lots of capillaries visible here as you can see okay so we have some branch points visible just up here for example these two cells two nuclei right there this one and this one are connecting right here okay again unfortunately we don't really see that intercalated disc here I'm having a hard time really getting a good contrast on this slide okay let's move on again more obvious branching going on here So again, very typical of cardiac muscle. Lots of capillaries in between the cells and lots of branching visible in between the cells as well. Okay. Let me see if I can bump up the contrast a little bit on this. Mm, not really, not seeing any intercalated discs on here. Okay, so we're gonna have to, uh, I can kind of see one here. It's a bit of an eosinophilic sort of line going across this. So right there, just above the pointer, would be one intercalated disc. Um, again, it's not super obvious, but it is there. If you're not what you're looking for, you can kind of make it out. Okay. I'm just gonna focus up and down a little bit just so you can hopefully see this. in here. Now this is a striated kind of muscle but you don't really see the striations here and again part of that reason is that the myofibrils are separated from one another by lots and lots of mitochondria and so because they're not as tightly packed it's a little bit more difficult to see the striations. I can kind of make them out here I think but not, they're not quite as obvious as they are in skeletal muscle. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see a bit more of this field of view. See if we can find some more interesting structures to look at. Okay, let's maybe increase the contrast a little bit. Okay, let's scan around. 
and some more. Again, as I'm scanning around, you can kind of see the organization overall. This is longitudinal section through this muscle. And you can see there's quite a bit of branching going on in between the cells. The cells are all in contact with one another, with its, their neighbors. They're passing along uh, the messaging and uh, coordinating their contraction together. Okay. Now, let me try to find another area. Maybe that will have more of a cross section so you can see the cross section as a kind of contrast to this. So let me just switch out and try to find something. Okay, so I found a region of cross section through, through this cardiac muscle. So that's what you're seeing here. And so you'll notice that the cells are fairly irregularly shaped, but you can very clearly see that we have very central looking nuclei. Okay, so as you look around, the nuclei are central, but the shape of the cell is not round. It's, well, somewhat roundish, but you can see it's a very irregular sort of shape. And again, that is the, because of the amount of branching that is going on. If you are cutting a cross section through this cell, you're going to find regions where it's kind of extending to one side or the other to make a branch point off in one direction or another. So that's what you're seeing here is this kind of a very irregular sort of appearance to these cells, very unusual sort of shapes to these things. But again, a very clearly visible central nucleus is present in most of these cells. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is the endocardium. And along the endocardium, we're going to find some Purkinje fibers. Now, don't call them Purkinje cells because Purkinje cells are found in the central nervous system. So this is called a Purkinje fiber. There's a whole group of them over here. They look like a bit of a mess right now, and so it doesn't really look like a cell. It's multiple cells. So Purkinje fibers are modified cardiac muscle cells, and so they will still have a central nucleus, and they will have myofibrils, but those myofibrils are arranged, up, are arranged around the outside of the cell, and that's what you're seeing here at the pointer, this kind of a wavy sort of region that has kind of a fuzzy thick appearance, very eosinophilic, so a thick sort of appearance. Those are the myofilaments, or myofibrils rather, arranged around the outside of the cell. The nucleus is right here, okay? Around the nucleus we have a fairly large, empty looking area that tends to be filled with glycogen usually, and that usually is leached out during slide preparation, so it kind of looks very empty. This is not a textbook example of one of these, so let me try to see if I can find a better example. Here's another nucleus here. Here's the outside of this cell. So again, the myofibrils are on the outside, and so wherever you see myofibrils, that, those will be the edges of these cells. And so you can see immediately how much larger they are compared to these uh, cardiomyocytes here. So you've got skeletal, uh, not skeletal, sorry, cardiac muscle cells here, and you have a Purkinje fiber right there. So a fairly significantly larger cell here, okay? Let me try to find some more of these. There's some more over here. Okay, here's, okay, so again, you can see the outline of one of these. So again, this right there, this dark edge here, that would be the outline of one of these cells. Now, because these cells are very long, you will quite often find that they just look like they have an empty space inside the known nucleus. And again, same idea as what you would have seen with, with smooth muscle fibers. You have a nucleus, then small, one small part of the cell, and the rest of the cell is just kind of cytoplasm. And that's what you're seeing here, that the nucleus of this cell would be somewhere above or beyond or below this plane of section. Same goes with this one. Okay, we can see one of these nuclei over here. And we can see some of the individual myofibrils kind of sticking out from the edges towards the nucleus here. Okay, so let's see if I can find another one. So there's a few more over here. Again, we have a nucleus with us a region that is pale, kind of an empty looking region, and then this kind of an outer boundary that is very fuzzy looking just because there's lots and lots of these myofibrils around the edges of these cells. Okay, here's another example here. Again, we have a nucleus and then this outer edge here. It's kind of a very fuzzy outer edge where you have the myofibrils. 
Let me zoom out if I see if I can find a nicer area of these things. Okay, so again, right there, just underneath the endocardium here. So we have this region of Purkinje fibers. Okay, so again, very large cells in comparison to what you see in this region here. Okay, let's see if I can find some more. Go along in the interior here. So there's another group of cells here. These are here. These are Purkinje fibers. Um, some more over here, more over here. So again, this is a fairly long cluster of cells. Again, they're all connected to one another and they're bringing information. They're bringing um, contract, uh, contraction information from the AV node. So they're kind of connected to the pacemaker and they are kind of allowing all the cells in the heart to kind of contract at the same time. So they're much faster at conducting action potentials, okay? So they're very specialized. So there's more over here. Let's see if I can zoom in on this area and find you some good examples. Okay, so here we go. And so here again, we have a nucleus of one of these Purkinje fibers, a very clear area around it, and then here, oops, the edge of it right there, this darker outline composed of lots and lots of myofibrils. Okay, so again, that's one large cell. And again, right next to it, you can s see for comparison, some smooth muscle, sorry, not smooth, sorry, cardiac muscle fibers right there, okay? So hopefully this has been helpful. And again, lots more of these here and here as well. And hopefully this has been helpful. We'll see you in the next video.